Hello everybody and welcome to Adobe Live. My name is Flynn. I'm here with a fantastic Adrian Waluju and um, we would like to begin by acknowledging the traditional owners of the land in which we are creating and streaming from today and pay our respects to elders past, present and emerging. Adrian, how are you doing? Yes, I'm doing great. Thank you for asking. How about you, Flynn? I'm, I'm doing well. We're catching up about all the, all the throes of the pandemic and earthquakes and hail that's been happening in <laughs> Melbourne. So I'm glad to, yeah. glad to see you doing so well. Yeah, it's, um, yeah, trying to, yeah, creative work does help like in trying to um, cope with what's happening. And yeah, that's why we're drawing what we're drawing today, which is a scenery that I'm missing so much <laughs> once we are able to travel more. Gonna draw draw the things that you miss, um, which is a lovely sentiment. Um, so, hello everybody uh, that's that's watching. Uh, if you're watching over on YouTube, the chat, the live chat we are using today is at um, be.net slash live. So jump on over there if you want to say hi. Always great to hear from you. Uh, where you're from? Where are you tuning in from? It's great to great to hear that. Um, and we have Johanna looking after us as well. So if there's any links or kind of things that we want to chat about, um, she'll help us out. So hi, Johanna. Um, hello, uh, Alessandra as well. Um, and here on Anonymous, uh, I'm probably saying that incorrectly, Panda. Uh, that's an amazing name. Um, very challenging for me to start out with that one, but hey, I try my best. Um, but yeah, so uh, here we are, Adobe Live, and um, we're here on a Tuesday here. We do a part one uh, today, if you're not familiar with our version of Adobe Live, and part two on Thursday, which works really, really well with Adrian's workflow, because um, you often create your illustrations in Illustrator with the goal of animating them in After Effects after. Yeah. Um, so for today, are we, are we starting the... The fun, like the yeah, we can get into it right now. Okay, I'll share your I'll share your screen. Let's start. Let's right. let's kick it off. And um, I love this I love this cow. I've been looking at this cow as we were getting set up. It's so Thank cute. You. Yeah, because like yeah, so like so today, like usually what I did is like I prepare some sketches and um, sometimes I try a bit in Illustrator. But I was like telling Flynn today, like I hope that. Today, I'll share more about my process and you'll also do see me do a trial and error because I think that's um, that's more reflective of what my usual workflow. And and I'm really glad you like the cows because when I first came to Australia, I was like so excited to see the cows in black and white. Like I'm like, because like where I came from, like I see like the black and white cows, but like only on milk cartons. All right. So, so and i don't know like i think a lot of the cows in indonesia where i'm from like the one that i see they're more like i don't know like just white or like just brown mm. or a bit grayish so like when i came to melbourne a few years ago and when i was on road trips and i see like all this like black and white cows that i've always seen in cartoons like in, <laughs> in like milk products i'm like oh my goodness they're so cute <laughs> they are pretty cute and the best thing is about it when you like drive past them if you make a sound they all just kind of like look at you and yeah. watch you and, good times and you always see it from afar and like you always see it like in cartoons so they look small but then like when you see them up close they're actually really big and they're huge yeah and i did a google and i think like one cow is like one ton so i'm like wow that's that's heavy. <laughs> like, <laughs> That's I didn't right. realize how how big they are. So yeah, so it's um like the work today. It's kind of like inspired by that. And I always see this really big, and it, I never knew what it is. Like the hay bale, I think this this thing. Oh yeah, like, yep. The like big like, oh. the big circular ones. Yeah, like it's like a cylinder, like laying down like right. on these fields. And I was wondering, like, what is that? It looks so neat. Like, how do they have something so geometrically kind of like perfect, like in the midst of like nature? And then. Again, like I did some research and it's, yeah, I think they use tractor to roll things. And then apparently like the circular 
way of doing it is better because it's easy to transport and also mm. when it rains it drips because like it's curved so like, oh that's like really oh, right hey i didn't really know that cool. <laughs> yeah so yeah i and when i was little i like playing like those farming games like i find it so of course it's not realistic like um but it's like it's quite nice um so yeah i have a fond this kind of like special fondness for farms and agriculture where like a really I, I sometimes joke to someone like when like I want to have a farm one day but obviously I don't know what it takes um, but I would love to visit one one day yeah um, yeah farms are cool <laughs> so that's the background <laughs> of the things that we we what we are drawing today yeah um, so I'm glad some, like you also like the cows um, so like when you say before I start my illustration what I do is I do like a quick sketch like a thumbnail so it's really important to make it like super small so that you're able to see like the composition so because like when you start with a really big canvas like the thing is like you focus on like the details but not necessarily on the kind of like the silhouette like the composition and the overall like look but this is like what i've been learning as well because i've always been drawing by eyes and not exactly learning the technical so i'm i'm still learning and i'm sharing this and in here I try, so like I thought like I want to do something like this, like with the scenery um, and like learning, like, like separating like the grid into like the three different, like the, the lines. And this is I think is the rule of thirds, which I think like a lot of people have, have heard about, but like the focus, your eyes usually focus on this, like the, the points that overlap. So I'm moving rather than putting the character right in the middle, like I try to move it a bit to the right. Mm. And, yeah, like putting like the cows like in some of the like focus point to kind of like um, yeah highlight that. And oh, that's cool. Yeah, I was definitely going to ask you about the grid. Like, is that something that you put in like to the <laughs> thumbnail portion? It's it's yeah, it's something that I'm trying to be more intentional because mm. some people, like sometimes like people ask, oh, how do you do this? I'm like, I feel I'm not able to give like a good explanation because I do things by eye and. I think as I learn and I grow as an artist, it's important to understand why I do certain things. So mm. it is an effort <laughs> in that. Um, and yeah, like this is like the third one. I'm, this is another thing that I've learned is value. Like I think a lot of like, I'm sure like you have a lot of digital painters that are like really, they usually use value uh, painting where rather than starting with colors, it's actually starting with like the value of the like whole image. So you want to have contrast um, in in your work because I think like colors look different but they may not necessarily have like a good contrast um, with their surrounding mm. and what happens is your eyes are scattered and I think in design like when you have contrast like it helps you focus on the things that you want to see and what I've learned also like with painting um, it's good to have value contrast I am again like this is something that I'm still figuring out so I, I, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm hoping to get better at this, but yeah, like I, I try, <laughs> I try here and then I try putting like the colors in and having like really, um, I use like, like any painting, like any painting software, just like to give like a high level color. And so I'll reference this for my color palette today and a few sketches of things that I'll need to trace over so that it's just easier to do that. So yeah, so that's a bit of like my prep and I go through this like in a few minutes, but trust me, like with the trial and error, it took, took quite quite a quite a while. And I feel like this is the hardest part. Like when you start like making the illustration in Illustrator, it's actually much simpler because you know what you're going for. Yeah. Yeah. yeah cool. um, so that's so that's um, the background. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's super great. I'm just going to check in with chat. Uh, great yeah. to see you, uh, Wade, in chat. Good to see you. Hope you're doing well. And Anna, that's uh, great. We saw I caught some of your stream earlier today, Anna, uh, which was awesome. Um, but yeah, super cool. Um, so you've so you sketch this all out um, in in different application, then you bring it into Illustrator. Yeah, yeah. That's what I. Yeah, so I just like. Um, put the image here and now since I'm going to say trace the elements I'm just like cropping that and then putting that in one layer and decrease the opacity um yeah I, I actually really enjoy working with the latest illustrator on iPad mm. um because it actually for certain things I feel like it's going to be much easier like <clears throat> 
like the cloud, you can make a more organic looking um, shapes with the the yeah with the the app on iPad. Because like on computer, I like working with mouse, um, and it's not always easy to create like organic looking um, shapes. Right. Is that because you lose the like pressure sensitivity? Mm, it's just like think the the doodly look or the organic right curve like those those curve um yeah <laughs> i know go. what you mean yeah you like you know like like the kind of sort of subtle imperfections i guess that make it look mm. like a sketch um because you know illustrator is such a precise tool like it's it geometric is. and everything like that so yeah i totally i totally get that which is perfect like for certain things like um Hey, it's funny like you mentioned about like the subtle imperfection i was like walking my neighborhood and like we we're trying to get our lawn worked on like at the moment our lawn is kind of like that and we are like talking about having fake grass or real grass and yeah and yeah, like my husband and i was like thinking about i was like for me sometimes like i like practical things and i thought oh, fake grass looks easy to maintain and but he said like he he likes real grass because there is a sense it doesn't look uniform and I think mm. we, we can appreciate to some degree a sense of imperfections because it's beautiful in its, in its own way. Mm. So yeah, so I think that's sometimes that's that that can be lost like when you when you work with just like the tool like the geometric tools like that's why like they have I like the effect where you can randomize like some of the shapes to make it look more random. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, totally. Yeah. I like that real world example, um, like in, in design. I love it. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Like, what do you prefer yourself to launch? Do you like, are you someone who likes like landscaping stuff or? You know, I, no, um, but like, I think, I don't know. I've seen like apartments and places where they do have like, kind of like the fake grass and everything like that. And I got to admit that when I see it, I'm like, oh. It's a bit of a, it's a bit of a shame, but maybe that's also from like the last two years of being like in a two bedroom apartment with no outside. I'm like, I just want to feel grass, real grass, <laughs> <laughs> underneath my feet. Like that would be that would be really nice. So I think I might have to like change my tune um, over the last little bit of time from spending so much time in home. So yeah, yeah I might be with your husband on that one. <laughs> It's, yeah, but I mean, like, even, like, fake grass, like, they, some of them are really good to the point that you can't tell, I think. Like, That's true. Know. That's true. Maybe I can't tell. Maybe I can't tell. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, that one looks real, uh, but it's actually fake. Um, cool. So this is, so you brought your sketches in and um, into Illustrator. And just a reminder for those that are joining us, um, so Adrian's um, will be animating this. So often we'll, like, create these il fantastic illustrations in their own right. Um, but then bring them into After Effects and do these really subtle in, um, illustrations to them, like, uh, sorry, animations to them, um, which just are super, super engaging. They're really, really cool. Um, and so it's really interesting seeing your process here, like being quite, quite precise over the top of your initial sketch um, to bring this Illustrator stuff in. Looks really cool. I like how, as how you were saying that precise, and then I'm just like going out of the line. Like, <laughs> <at> that <laughs> Where you need to be, you're very precise. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. It's like always like it's always a guideline. It's never a, it's never a um, something that you have to follow to the T. I'm I'm not a, I'm not a per. I I don't know. If, I think it's either a strength or weakness. Sometimes that I'm not a um, detailed oriented person, and yeah, it's hard for me to stick to instruction to some degree. I was like cooking yesterday, and I. I don't know why I was like looking at one tablespoon, but then I read it as one cup. So imagine that everything oh, wow. is applied by twelve. I think at this point, <laughs> I I don't know why I didn't cross my mind when I was like marinating this five hundred grams of like meat, and I'm using like twelve times the portion of the marinade. Oh wow! <laughs> but yeah, I'm not. I I both uh, I eyeball everything in life um, and cooking as well. And I like it. <laughs> <laughs> how did it taste did it taste okay in the end thankfully like i i separate the marinade so now i have like a pre-made uh, mix <laughs> oh there you go now you're a food prepper like just like yeah. that that's awesome um <laughs> got a couple of questions from chat um so alessandra asks um adrian what is an illustration that you love creating but find it hard to start drawing 
Mm. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I think find... to do with hands is hard for me. Oh, hands! Like as you can probably see in my sketch, the hands are hidden in the in the that thing. Um, I think one of the things that I want to learn is perspective. I really enjoy like watching those um, like sceneries and then having the depth of um, layers mm. but I haven't spent enough time in learning about the perspective and I'm a bit scared sometimes to start which I shouldn't be and I think like when I was like learning the value um, like painting I think like, that's like the first step of trying to understand depth because apparently like value also of, of like how treating something looks so um so yeah, I think definitely landscape. I really like landscape, but I think um, I get scared when it looks too flat, and I know mm. I have to learn perspective more. Um, so yeah, like foundation because I'm a I'm a self learner. I self learn like a lot of my illustrations, so I have to actually discipline myself to learn like a lot of these like foundations that may not look fun. Like intuitively, like you just want to draw what you want to draw but right. like sometimes you have to sit down and watch videos like about like theories and like, um, like color theories like perspective like doing things properly before you create your own style mm. um, yeah I think that's probably it yeah I don't know like how about you like Flint for you it's Flint's hands oh yeah hands like impossible I mean not that I illustrate all that much but whenever I whenever I do I, I would avoid that like the plague um yeah definitely very very difficult and even seeing like really like experienced um illustrators uh here on here on adobe live it's, it's reassuring when people are like oh yeah hands are so hard to get right <laughs> um so yeah what about you chat um any illustrators in the chat what is the hardest thing um to to draw or better yet yeah, we'll, we'll ask um alessandra's question correctly um what's an illustration that you love creating but find it hard to start drawing interested if like talking about like hard to draw sometimes also like when having like a fake brief also helps sometimes for me mm. um, because I think sometimes we don't know what we want to draw like it's hard like a blank canvas can be quite terrifying sometimes for me like it's like you can go anywhere like, you can draw anything but sometimes without the boundary or limitation like it can be quite um, like, paralyzed by the different options that it can be mm. so for me sometimes like having prompts like i know like with what's happening like inktober right now and there's so many different prompts that are happening it's quite helpful to see like you have this one word and then you think about you start drawing from that so you have like a starting point so a starting point is really helpful um in starting to draw um yeah that's really it's, cool yeah a, a website that we came across um during adobe live if anyone is interested in that um, which I'll just share in chat is um, goodbrief.io, um, which has been quite cool. Uh, we've actually used it once or twice um, for Adobe Live um, to get some ideas of, of what to kind of like a, maybe a fake brief or something like that. It's really cool. It's like a generator and so it'll generate a fake brief for you and it does like design like specifically for logos, illustrations and things like that. Um, it's quite good if you're kind of stuck and, and you know, want some some boundaries or kind of guidelines to help you kind of be creative within that box um yeah. i think like having you know yeah as you said like having a blank blank file or blank canvas or something and trying to sort of sit there and think up a you know subject matter or a brief or something like that by yourself can uh, can be quite challenging and time consuming um so there you go check it out I think maybe that's something i need to check out for our next um like next um season of live stream yeah honestly confess like it took me a while to like really settle on this and I'm like should I do something with autumn should I do something with food like so second yeah, <laughs> yeah so I'm doing the cow now <laughs> mm -hmm. um I have another question uh from Akbar uh thanks for the question so um I are you going to convert your illustration into an animation after effects like Lottie animation maybe that would be a very interesting animation. I was also thinking about doing lovely um, animation. Um, 
yeah, maybe I think for the next stream I was thinking of like also showing like storyboarding a bit. Like I'll I'll mm-hmm. do like a storyboard because I think that's also helpful in becoming like a reference point when you start animating and planning your um yeah planning your animation. But yeah, we'll be doing it in After Effects because yeah, like these are vector files and they are perfect for um, importing or exporting to After Effects. Yeah, um, cool. Loti. Yeah, Loti is Loti is quite magnificent. <laughs> like it's I didn't realize how big GIF files can. Do you say GIF or GIF, Lin? This is like a um... GIF. Okay, okay, that's good. <laughs> what about you? What about you? Yeah. If it's graphic. It's graphic. Um, again, my my husband is like GIF. I'm like I'm so confused. Um, but yeah, okay, GIF or GIF, and they are quite big. Um, like when you start to do like a more complex animation, like it tends to be quite heavy to put on websites. So like Lodi is like quite an interesting um, new format that allows you to do really nice, high quality crips animation and then put that on your website. Um, yeah, I think website and apps, I know is like the big two usage at the moment. Mm. And just for anyone that doesn't doesn't know, like Lottie files, like basically will convert it to code to make it lightweight. Is that how it works? I'm not super across it. It's so like when you export it, it turns to like this format called JSON. And right. they are actually like a string of code that is made up of like shapes and so it's like animating through code, but you don't have to do the code with the plugins. But I think like in the past, like you give animation and then the developers have to think about translating that to code. So that was like like a really big um, barrier from like implementing animation, like in interactive media, like apps and website. But like with the development of like low-ti, I think it's, it's really bridging the um, animation and code. Um, Making it more accessible to everyday implementation. Oh, very yeah. cool. Yeah, I'm going to check that out in more detail. Um, and I think Johanna shared a link in chat as well if you want to check it out yourself. But yeah, that's some homework for me. I'm going to check that out. Yeah, it's, it's an open source, like the, the technology itself. So it's quite cool. So it's quite cool. Um, yeah, we can do that next time. <laughs> like, uh, I'm just like, Putting it on the website, but I've, but yeah, sadly, like you can't put it on emails just yet. Right. Yeah, emails are its own thing. Emails are always like notoriously difficult to uh, design really well for all the different like email catches and way people you know people have them in Mac Mail and then like Outlook and then on the web and in different browsers and all sorts of stuff. Yeah, someone needs to fix emails up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I didn't also like when I start to learn more about email. Email is so it's like a world in itself. Like there's so many different factor that contributes to to email marketing. Mm. <laughs> have you yeah, have you do you interact with a lot of like farm animals in like in the past or not um. much? Yeah, I've got a funny, kind of funny story. My mum was a veterinarian. She's retired now, but she was a veterinarian. And um, although we lived in the suburbs, um, she would often, um, we would often end up with all sorts of strange animals at our house growing up. Um, not, not a ton of like farm animals, but um, we did, we definitely had, we had a lamb for a while. Um, I don't know why we had the lamb. I was really young, but there's lots of photos of me next to the lamb. Um, and then we had, um, we've had a couple of penguins, which people are usually surprised about. Um, so fairy penguins will sometimes um, like just turn up on the beach or something like that. And because my mum's a vet, people would see it and go, oh, we'll take it to the local vet. Um, and then you'd need to like release it correctly to the right people who know where to release it and all that sort of stuff. Um, and so we'd end up like hanging on to these penguins for a while. Um, that was pretty cool. Wow. And, and yes, Johanna is saying Flynn's apartment will be full of ducks. If you could, I reckon. Yes, I've had many ducks growing up as well. Ducks and chickens and stuff like that. Oh, like, is that like, is that your favorite kind of like pets yeah, or? Ducks are my, ducks are my favorite animal for sure. Why? Like why? <laughs> I would say I love to hear it. <laughs> They're just really cool. Um, and really kind of dopey 
but in like a really nice way. Like actually, if you kind of have them as like a bit of a pet, um, and they're not very useful pets. It's not like you can train them to do anything. Um, <laughs> they don't really. I mean, in my experience, they'll react to food, but you can't like kind of you can't toilet train them or do anything like that. But um, but they're funny and they're cool. <laughs> That's pretty much it. Oh, yeah, like penguins. Like a lot of people would like wait to see penguins but you have penguins at your own home when you're... yeah they just get delivered yeah it was like a good and bad thing of having a veterinarian like parent because um people would always turn up with like injured animals at all sorts of hours um you know it's like oh this lizard looks sleepy um and then it would be like two o'clock in the morning or something it's like all right i'll deal with the lizard um but yeah it's is your is your mom like still an active like uh is she still doing that? No, she's retired now, so oh. she's no longer no longer veterinarian. That makes an interesting childhood though. Yeah, it was. Yeah. yeah, for sure. So I guess like you're not like you like some people like are a bit they don't know how to handle animals. So I guess like to some degree like you're used to that. Pretty used to animals, yeah. We don't have any at the moment. Um, but yeah, I would love to get some animals. Just a That's thousand ducks. <laughs> would be would be my goal one day <laughs> like usually like during zoom meetings like people have their cats walking and then you'll have your ducks just like walking the duck on the shoulder yeah a different duck <laughs> each time would be really cool yeah. be great for the live stream so um okay. like there's this like youtube channel like i think they are cooking with dog um channel like i don't know if you've heard about that one it's like no. a japanese show and they have like this poodle like next to it um Kind of like pretending to be the host and it's quite <laughs> so you can do like a live stream with ducks so. that sounds super cool yeah i was picturing just like having a room full of ducks and having like a duck cam we could just switch to um whenever we wanted to <laughs> next time coming in uh 2022 ladies and gentlemen um but there was something else i wanted to chat to you about we're about halfway and you can feel you can keep going or you can take a break whatever you whatever you prefer while we're going through. But I wanted to talk about um, your upcoming Adobe Max session, um, which is super exciting because it's something that um, you've been working on behind the scenes. Um, Adobe Max, of course, everybody is live now. You can go check it out and you can find Adrian's session. Um, and we were chatting about this. I, gosh, I can't even remember when we reached out to you um, to see if you were interested in doing a session at Adobe Max. Um, it was probably a long time ago now, maybe like June or something, maybe even sooner than June. I think early, I think it's actually, yeah, around that time. Yeah. yeah. Wow. It's almost a five. long time ago. Yeah. Um, and you know, part of that was like, what, what, what do you want to talk about? Like, what would you, what would you like to do? And you had a re you have a really great session. Um, I've seen it behind the scenes. Um, and it's awesome. And I think if you're, you know, interested in illustration, particularly if you're starting out, um, and or you know, designer that wants to learn some of this stuff, it was um, things I wish I knew as a junior designer. Yeah, uh, junior like artist, designer, artist. illustrator. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I think, yeah, like I think being self-learning. And I was when I first graduated, I was kind of um forced into freelancing because i think i didn't know what to expect growing up i didn't have a lot of oh this is a nice shade like it's nice to see it in these um circles um <laughs> and and yeah like i i got a lot of support from my family and friends which is like amazing but i think professionally i don't have like mentors so and, and i think the fact that i moved to australia right before university and then so it's kind of like i'm new to the community so i didn't have anyone mm. that i like asked when i started when i graduated um so yeah like there was like a lot of trials and errors and i guess like when when you reached out to me i thought what is one thing that i'm passionate about and definitely is kind of like bridging that gap or that unknowns to people who just entered the industry because like i feel industry is tough but the toughest is always when you first begin because you're not sure what are the things that I should be aware of? What are the things that I'm missing? And mm. not to say that I've figured them out because I'm sure I missed something, but the things that I know that I, I shared it in that sessions, which I 
it's like half an hour, 25 minutes session. So it's not that long, I think. <laughs> yeah, it's challenging. Um, it's quite a challenging amount of time, isn't it? I mean, even, even Adobe Live is like an hour, um, or 55 minutes or whatever. But yeah, 25 minutes, really hard to, um, to kind of get, get messages across in that short amount of time. Yeah, but I was like kind of like hoping like the, the things, kind of like the principles and some of the things that when people are watching, when you, if, you, if you're a student or you're starting or you just want to kind of like see what other people are experiencing, it's like a good thought starter to see where you're at at the moment. And it's, it's not going to be like art technicalities, but it's more about how to, like the kind of mindset to be ready of when you want to pursue like this line of my career, I think. And it, of like, to say the least, like the principles help in maintaining like your mental well-being as a creator. So yeah, so I think that's that's yeah some of the things. Um, it's been a while since I had talked about the session because like yeah we we prepared quite <laughs> quite a long quite time a ago. Yeah. yeah. No, it's great. And I think it I think it's like universal for a lot of industries. You talked about the gap between like, I guess, like graduating or like starting in an industry and then whatever success looks like to you. Right. Like that, that, that is the hardest part um, because there's a lot of unknowns um, within that. Um, do I just keep doing what I'm doing and eventually everything will work out? Do I need to change what I'm doing? Do I need to do more? Do I need to do less? Um, things like that I think you just you just don't know and I think of course the problem a lot of the times is there's not necessarily one answer um, and what might be true for one person isn't true for everybody um, but yeah it, it's an awesome session and you did like it's in your style which is really cool um, added your like illustrations into it and everything it like you could see you can see immediately that it's like your session uh, which is super exciting yeah, like I, I had fun creating the slide deck. Like I did a lot of doodles and um, yeah, I try. I mean, like it's 25 minutes. Like I try to make it visuals um, so it's more engaging. But yeah, like as you say, like it's already half an hour, like we're doing this stream and I'm like just drawing this cow at the moment. <laughs> so, um, we have a great question from chat. Um, Adrian, what was your first illustration project? Um, I think the first time I monetize <laughs> my, it was, like, is it commercial? I guess, um, maybe, um, yeah, you can pick, you can pick. Yeah. Maybe your first pay, maybe your first paid project. Sure. I think my first paid illustration was like, it was quite simple. Like it was, I was like drawing on an Instagram and someone reached out to me and they really liked, and they wanted to give a gift to a new, like a family friends. Mm. So that was my first um, illustration project. And my first animation project was this explainer video about like a downloading like plugins. <laughs> it's right. very, I think like one of the things with working in the creative industries, like sometimes we see in Instagram, like all this really cool, like um, really, I'm not, I'm not saying like I, I don't like it, but you'll find that a lot of projects is also very, um, normal like i don't know how to put this mm. it's not everything is like a big campaign for like a big company but they are also fun because like i get to like you get to work like the business owners and you get to hear their story you get to hear their um like how like what they want to do with their products and it's quite nice to be able to take part in that journey in making like their dreams happen because for a lot of like business owners like it's it is their dream like to create like different like brands different products and I think that's what, like, that's one of the things that I enjoyed about freelancing is being able to meet different kind of people. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not saying that it's, I don't like it. When I say normal, it doesn't mean like it's bad. It's just that maybe what you like may not necessarily have to be quite as bombastic. Like, I don't know what's the word to use. Right. <laughs> like, like outgoing like oh, i love bombastic oh my god i'm gonna be saying bombastic all day now um, <laughs> <laughs> I, um yeah my speech pattern i think has 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 really been affected by lockdown like i i i don't know what is conventional anymore <laughs> i know exactly what i know exactly what you mean i remember yeah. I, I went out to get like coffee or something i'm never going out really at the moment i went out to get coffee and i just couldn't explain like my order even though i was standing in the line thinking about what i needed to say then I was like, blah, 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 blah. 
<laughs> oh, I've <laughs> lost my social skills completely. Um, yeah. So I know what you mean. Um, yeah, but so yeah. It's really fun, like creating, like all meeting all these different uh, business. I this one time I work with like someone creating like a like vitamins for pets and I drew like I illustrate like dogs um, for them it was it was quite I don't do a lot of like animal illustration because I like animals like a whole different categories like some people like hands but like animals are also very technical because the way they move the way they are shaped is like mm. different human like human is a bit better because at least you see them every day but for animals unless unless you have animals coming to your place every day like right maybe, <laughs> like you don't really see how they move normally and it's a bit um, trickier but yeah it's it's fun like you get to see all this different industry and I found myself in the industry of often time um, children children and babies and young mothers <laughs> I think right. that's like what my art style resonates with um, yeah I can see that like like bright colors like geometric shapes and things like that I can totally see how that would appeal like kit, like young kids, like families and all that sort of stuff. Um, so when's your children book coming out? <laughs> <laughs> Is that um, the next step? I think that's one of the things in my bucket list. But like writing a story is also like another thing, right? Like, um, um, yeah, it's, it's a whole, it's another, it's another um, world. <laughs> um, I think, I don't know if I talk about it like in my talk, but also like even in the creative industry there's so many different paths like you mentioned like about like success like so i'm giving like a bit of like um preview but and to get where you want to be in that creative like specific creative industry like it will take you different priorities that it means like you don't have to do everything so um so yeah like that's another thing that is going to be talked about mm. okay so i'm putting this what happens if we just drew cows today? I don't know. I'm sorry. That's fine. Drawing cows is cool. <laughs> it's always very hard, like, um, with the live stream. It's like you only got, like, 55 minutes. Uh, you've got questions coming at you and all that sort of stuff um, all at the same time to do something that would, you know, probably take you a lot longer. Like, um, so you don't have to finish it all on the stream. Yeah, but... It, it was quite interesting like when I start to pick up the colors as well um, like again like you thought about like cows you think about it's it being like black and white but then in this shade like it's actually a bit more mossy like the dark color mm -hmm. so I think that also like when people ask me like how to choose color it's like don't it's very rare that you have to use like a real black or a real white in a illustration piece because I think in real life it's very rare that you see something fully black usually it's really dark gray or at the very least like there's this thing called like ambience light so imagine like this is like the sorry bounce light i think like mm. there's like the green grass and the green grass is going to affect like the way the blackness will look which will in turn look a bit mossy so right. adding some kind of like temperature to your the color that you choose helps for me helps lifening mm. yeah and in this case i kind of prefer yeah, because um, if I put like the like the lines or color, it actually looks really stark, and I don't want people to focus on that small details, which is not mm. that important. Yeah, um, I'm really happy with the cow. Like I really like cows. Such a cool cow. It's almost emo. <laughs> it's I almost see it as like a bit of a like got a bit of a fringe kind of coming over to the side. <laughs> punk punk cow. Yeah, it's a punk cow. And I guess like one of the things that I really like with working with illustrators is that you, it's easy to duplicate um, items. And mm. like in this instance, like I have a few cows here, but then like I can just like create one cow and I can just like copy and paste them and like resize them and they won't, lo they won't lose their um, resolution, which is nice. And we're talking about color quite a bit. Where do you get your original color palette from? Because you did the sketch, 
and then you color picked from that color palette. Where did the colors originally come from? Uh, trial error. So, trial and error, yeah. Yes. Like color picking um, and just kind of looking at it and, and back and forth. Like looking, like looking a lot of like photographic references really helps as well. Like um, mm. I think like the reason why this is the kind of like mood that I'm looking for, I want something more spring, something more fresh. It's really different. Like if you want to go for something more autumn, like you'll choose something more warm. But since it's spring, like you want have you want to have a bit of that lemon fresh um, ness. That's why like I have a bit of a yellow and like the color that I chose also is like like very it's very spring. <laughs> it, it, mm. And I think like one of the things that I remember really well is like the field. It's not green, but it's like yellowish green. So like I think I start from that too, and then I use that as a reference to build the other color palette. So for instance, like the, like the grass that is closer to you, like usually it's darker in value because I think I forgot, there's a reason for that. But, <laughs> and then I, I chose something that is contrast. And one thing to, like one way to check contrast that I've also learned is, I think in here you can put like, say like a black color and then change the opacity to color. So like you are able to see, assess like your color um, like value because I find that some people are able to work from this and then add colors. For me, I use that as a reference of what I wanted to have the contrast like. Mm. And when I choose the colors, I keep checking with this like filter to see if the contrast is there. Because, wow, that is yeah. really cool. I did not know that. Yeah, like I also learned this like in like an online tutorial. So it's yeah, it's really for someone like me who likes work with colors first like this helps you keeps you in check um to see how like it looks if i put it here so this is like from here so that's why it's really similar but this one i use this kind of like as a reference and then i pick my colors and then in like in an earlier version like for instance the the pants is really blending with the grass so like there was not much contrast even though it's a different color so it helps inform me on what things that I need to adjust. So yeah, that's that's really that's a really cool trick. I did not know that you could do that and just move it around your thumbnails like that. That is super cool. So yeah, Makes this sense. is super, like, this is like <laughs> a, a frame that you can just like pull in. Yeah, that's great. I don't know about you, chat, but I did not know that. Um, I'm still I still every now and then um, get to tell people about your like draw inside the shape. Um, <laughs> that you did live on stream. Um, it's always amazing. I noticed that you've you've done it a couple of times here today as well. Um, and so many people don't know that, myself included. I didn't know it until you showed us um, on stream. And it's just such a time saver. It's such a great way um, to kind of create illustrations in um, Illustrator. Very cool. Um, what's up, Ben Marriott in chat? Lovely to see you, my friend. Hi, Ben. <laughs> <laughs> it's... Yeah, I think um, like there's this one time we had like an Adobe Illustrator challenge, like it was in Behat as well. And I think I discovered a lot of new tools that I didn't know existed to make my life much better because I think I was just too used to like doing things in a certain way and I'm comfortable with that. But then there are these features that actually helps. Yeah, and drawing inside is, yeah, it changed my life. I, I used to mask things and have like duplicates of items and it's hard to work with sometimes. Yeah. And like mm -hmm. a lot of sending things forward and backward, I would do um, like lots of sending things all the way to the back and then, you know, oh no, now I've got to send that one all the way to the back and sending that to the back. Um, but with the drawer inside, it just, yeah, it's just such a time saver. It's amazing. Um, but Marriott says these scenes look great. Yes, they do. You. Yeah, like we're like Ben perhaps missed like our talk about ducks and cows and all things in between. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sorry, Ben, you missed the duck stuff. We haven't talked. We haven't talked about di talked. We haven't spoken about uh, dinosaurs yet, though, um, which is Ben's Ben's thing. Oh, hmm. Well, yep. Yeah. Next stream. <laughs> 
Very cool. We've got uh, 10 minutes left, uh, ladies and gentlemen. So if there's any questions, let us know in the next 10 minutes. And of course, we'll be back on Thursday um, and um, jumping into After Effects. So we're going to move, <laughs> sorry, um, the cow into After Effects and maybe do a little bit of animation. Yeah, like I think I'm thinking of like doing, um, so imagine like if it's an ad, like it will come from the bottom and like the leaf will like open up and kind of like opens to this new scenery and then like it, like the camera kind of like slows down and the cow won't be doing anything <clears throat> domestic. Like the cow is going to be quite subtle, like it was just like going to be moving their like tails and just munching its way as usual. Um, but yeah, like it's um, like another way of adding movement to your scene is not <clears throat> it's not just like the elements within, but like how you move the whole like like, fa like frame, mm. um, camera panning. Like it's yeah, it's funny. It's like animation. Like you need a lot of. Suddenly, I forget how to turn off this. <laughs> outlines. This... Yeah. How do I? Oh no! Come on. Yeah. Come on. Why? <laughs> yeah, like, sometimes muscle memory like it's you you forget about these things yeah like in animation like you really have to learn about like physics and how things work like in real life a bit of yeah. cinematography it's it's everything so you're thinking about the animation and what will animate during during this phase like in illustrator are you thinking about obviously because you're kind of creating it um Geometrically, like as, like kind of, it needs to be. You need to be thinking about what you're going to animate in Illustrator. Are you thinking about that when you're doing your thumbnails, like really at, at the beginning? Like oh, I'm going to add some. I want there to be a little bit of wind, so I'm going to add some leaves in here, or like at mm. what? I guess I guess I could refine that question down to make sense. Um, at what point do you start thinking about what parts of this artwork will animate? Uh, <clears throat> I think, generally speaking. Yeah, like there is like if you know that this is going to be animated, like I think definitely when you are planning on the scene, like what would make sense and most efficient. That's mm. why, um, and like I think usually like it's more about like how would you like it to move, so like how do you place it in the thumbnails. But then when you're creating the illustration itself, is making sure that you have the elements overlapping because if it's not moving, it's fine to have things that are not seen for instance like the things under the hand like it does not have to exist because it's not moving mm. but at one point if you're moving the hand like it's your you don't want it to be just blank you want it to be actually showing like the things that is behind it so when you're preparing the illustration like in here like the hills um you want even like under the mountains to have like things so that when things like move or things slide it's, like it's not blank so thinking about the overlap especially with limbs um it's really obvious like when 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 it's not prepared for animation mm. yeah it's it's that those things um and yeah like but i, I do know that people who create illustration they may not have like animation <clears throat> background so it's still possible to work from those things but i do know that it means like it's more prep work after that yeah right yeah like getting like converting something that was just made to be a flat illustration into something that animates there might you might you know, end up having to spend a lot of work in there or redoing certain parts and things like that. Yeah. So, yeah, like, it's quite, yeah, like, when you, like, and having the background, it's also nice to see the contrast. Like, I can't even see the shirt just now. Mm. Um, and the other thing is, like, adding, like, masking. Like, you usually you don't want to do a lot of masking because masking is really hard when you move it um, over to After Effects. It gets wonky right. sometimes. It's not working as properly, so... If you know like you're yeah, you know, if you're working like in agencies and even though like you're focusing on illustration, like understanding a bit of the things that goes into the animation helps you create like the illustration um more suited for animation. Yeah. I I prefer to keep things simpler than not. Um when you first start, I think. So thankfully we finished two items. Yeah, let me group my cow. And I, I was hoping that we could do a bit more, but yeah, like it takes more time. It takes time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Had to get the cow right. And the cow looks right. 
The car is gonna be super small, but I take so much time for that one. <laughs> cow stream i love it um we have one more question um alessandra thanks for your questions today um she asks, uh what is an animation what part of animation is fun for you to do every time um, um it's not it's fun it's fun um, <laughs> it's funny but actually seeing all the layers organized it makes me feel Accomplished. Like I haven't even moved anything yet, but like making sure everything is functioning the way it is, it's just like the first step, the first step of having potentials. So it's it's nice because like when you work with something that is not organized, you feel scared, like you're gonna break something. Right. <laughs> so there's that um, sense. But like for the animation itself, I think I really like um, working with organic like one of the things that i want to try doing is like having like a flower blooms like so like from seed and then creating that with just like factor animation which i know is possible um uh, so i'm i like making things look real even though it's like super simple so usually like using some kind of like optical illusion so to achieve like certain effects which that's what it pretty much after effects is like I want to get there. Like, how do I get there? It's like figuring out how to get there. It's quite, quite fun. Right. Yeah. yeah. Um. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like very satisfying. Yeah, I, I'm a very, I like, yeah, I, I get bored easily. So I like when I have to like think, like what, I like doing puzzles. I like playing puzzle, like Sudoku and things like that, mm. because I like figuring things out. Um, yeah, look at that. The cow in the shadow. I'm, I'm so happy to That's see. That's cool. <laughs> see that. So, like, I'm going, like, for instance, like, for, um, I know that I will have a lot of cows in the final animation, like, but I don't need to copy them all. Like, I can just, like, have one of them and I'll duplicate that in After Effects because that's right. um, simpler. So, in the last few minutes, I'm, try I'm trying to build this scene. <laughs> yeah, there are only a few more minutes left. We've got about two minutes left, I would say. Um, but yeah, so I'll just remind uh, you all that we will be doing a part two of this stream. So if you're watching it live, that's going to be on Thursday. Um, if you're like Asia Pacific kind of region, if you're in the US, it'll be it's a Wednesday because today's a Monday, right? Time um, is weird. We're in the future. Um, and then if you're watching on replay, um, yeah, you can just check it out on YouTube or something like that to catch the part two. Um, we'll be, yeah, animating in After Effects. I love, I love the pencil tool, just getting like a quick little cameo. <laughs> it's been all, pe it's been all pen tool like the whole time. And then it's like, just going to quickly draw this like shape. Yeah. Quickly. This reminds me of like uni life when you have that line and you're just, Right. Powering up in the last few hours of the project. Yeah. So this is, I think, like one of the things that's easier if you have like pen tablets um, or like you work on like the iPad Illustrator version. You have um, like mountainish. Like this still feels a bit inorganic, which I'm going to fix. But in here, like I like how there's like more curve, which, right. yeah, which, yeah, it does feel like a mountain. I'm <laughs> redoing it. Actually, I'm just going to follow this. And this is the nice thing again about Illustrator. Like, I, it's this small, and then I bring it. You just to, scale it up. Yeah, it's it's really convenient. I think pixel problem. Like, I think when I was like digital painting, like resolution is like one of the things that I have a lot of problems with because it's like if I don't have if my canvas is not big enough in the beginning, like I kind of like ruin the whole thing. Mm, um, yeah, I know what you mean. So working yeah. in vector, it doesn't doesn't matter. Scale yeah. it up and down. Um, but yeah, that that is actually going to take us to time. Um, yeah. So we all need right. to so we don't get cut off and we get to say our goodbyes and all that sort of stuff. Um, but yeah, this is this is awesome. The cow stream, ladies and gentlemen. Um, thanks for the great questions. Uh, so I had some excellent questions today. Um, and yeah, we'll be we'll be back soon. <laughs> Look at all the cows. <laughs> yeah, thanks everyone. Yeah. I'll see you guys on Thursday. Yeah, we'll see you all on Thursday for part two. Adrian, thank you so much. Had a great time hanging out with you. Um, everybody, don't forget to 
register for Adobe Max, check out Adrian's session. It's awesome. Um, and you can register for it and add it to your schedule um, whenever you like. Thanks, everyone, and we'll see you on Thursday. Bye. Yeah.